and we're live. Awesome. And everybody, welcome to uh, the Savannah Podcasting Meetup. I guess let me switch over to the right camera. Mm -hmm. Everyone, welcome to the Savannah Podcasting Meetup. I'm uh, one of the co-hosts of it, Raz, and this is... Henrik de Gior. Henrik de... How do you say your last name? De Gior. De Gior. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I was saying de Gior. It's okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. No worries. <laughs> All right. Cool. So today we're going to talk about, um, for the meetup, we like to record the meetups. Uh, usually in front of a live audience. This time you're the live audience, mm -hmm. and it's us. Uh, so we're going to talk about monetization and what that means for a podcast in 2020. Uh, so we have a list of things we're going to cover really quickly. It should take us 20 or 30 minutes to knock everything out. So uh, if you have any questions, you can leave a comment or send us a message or join the group, the meetup group, Savannah Podcasting Meetup, and come with us next time. Come visit us next time. You can answer a question in person. Uh, so the first one is selling digital pro products on your podcast. Yep. Do you sell any digital products? I sell eBooks. Okay. Typically. Yes. Uh, I don't sell courses or software. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, my own eBooks, I sell them on there. Mm -hmm. How yep. many eBooks, uh, have you created? I have created, uh, about seven myself. Um, they're all on Amazon. Um, so they're sold through Amazon because, uh, well, bigger than just the podcast channel that I might have. Yeah. So that works well. Uh, I don't sell music because uh, I, I don't, uh, I'm not uh, music literate. <laughs> That's just me. <laughs> How about yourself? Um, I've not written, I have not written an ebook worth selling. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> and I, um, but outside of that, digital products, no. But I want to start. I mean, you told me about the service, Timmy. Yeah, where you can just mm -hmm. audio transcribe or um, mm -hmm. what was the other one? Rev. Yeah, yeah their own Rev owns Temi. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. T E M I T E M I dot com or yes. R E V dot com. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you told me about those, mm -hmm. and yeah. So I, I want to. I have one client. Uh, they do a law podcast, mm -hmm. and they want to create an ebook mm -hmm. from each episode because we have we're like fifty four now, fifty four episodes. That's great. Yeah, so they want to create an ebook. So I, th I think I'm going to start. I'm going to try that. I guess yeah. I'll check back in with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and T Temi is increasing their prices like next week. Oh, man. Yeah, but uh, Rev, I think it's the same price, and it's human transcription. T uh, Temi is uh, automated mm -hmm. machine transcription, which is faster, but. Uh, a little less consistent. Well, it's consistent, but it's uh, um, it's debatable which one's better. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, that's it's a good point. Do you know how much they're increasing it to? Twenty-five cents. Okay. Instead of ten. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it's like that minutes. It's like per per audio minutes. So it's like two and a half times. Oh my gosh. <laughs> or a whole dollar for a human transcription because know. you know us humans are more expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I guess so. That would mean what, um, like fifteen bucks per hour or something. Uh, yeah, instead something of like instead of uh, six. Yeah, instead of six. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that kind of sucks. Yeah, it's okay. It's, uh, it's supposedly they're they're gonna get better I guess it's too. Still not that bad. Yeah, it, it's not the end of the world. I mean, versus sixty. Right. For humans. Right. Right. And Which if, you, if you're creating an ebook, that's still not that bad. No, no, it's not that bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so. Okay. It's really debatable. Yeah. yeah Anyways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yes, that's that's all I sell. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't create music. I have friends that do. Mm -hmm. um, software and online courses are other options for uh, e e products, digital products. Mm -hmm. um, I've tried online courses before. I really want to create one for podcasting. Smart. Yeah, because a lot of people ask me all the time, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. about podcasting, how to create it, yep. and I don't have a course to sell. Uh -huh. And I don't, you know, everybody, because most people. Uh, when they say I want to start a podcast mm -hmm. and I need your help, mm -hmm. they don't really want my help. They don't want to pay the you know the hundred and fifty uh, bucks to, for the editing or, and production. Okay. Right, right, right. You know they want yeah. You know, so it's either high touch or low touch, right? Mm -hmm. Like high touch, you, you do almost everything for them. Low touch, it's like a call every week or two yep. kind yep. of thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I would love to create a course for people with uh, smaller budgets mm -hmm. for the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but that's yeah. So that's that's a few ways you can sell digital products mm -hmm. on your podcast. Yes. Ebooks. Sure. Uh, music, software, uh, or an online course. Mm -hmm. yeah. And by the way, we're we're using a, a list. Should we say? From, yeah, sure. From yeah. from from, from uh, our uh, the awesome Pat Flynn. Mm -hmm. uh, so this list uh, is, is there's nine on his list. We're gonna probably uh, come up with a couple others mm. uh, that that uh, he didn't necessarily list, but uh, he has a video that we'll put in the show notes, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, to his his uh, nine, and then we'll add some more in there too. 
Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So the next one is physical products. Mm -hmm. So merchandise and uh, merch. Mm -hmm. I uh, we do sell. So if you go to Crate Marketing. Dot com. No. If you go to what's the name of our podcast? Create the creative truth dot com. <laughs> the creative truth. Yes. The creative truth dot com. Yeah, okay. you can yeah. you can buy mugs. Okay. Oh. The, yeah. Show us the mug. You can buy mugs just okay. like this. There you go. The okay. creative truth to support I like. and support the cause. We have we have t shirts on there, we have hats on there. Uh huh. And it's all through a dropship company called um Printful. Print form? F U L Printful. Print full, yes. Like okay, yeah. Uh, and how, how, what's the website? Is it printful. .com? Printful. .com. Okay, okay, got yep. it. Super. Good. And they're based out of North Carolina and, oh. and Cal uh, California. Not far. Mm -hmm. Not far at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, with the, but it's really cool because you can just set it up online, mm -hmm. sell it through uh, your website, mm -hmm. and they handle all the shipping and customer service and. And is it on demand, or do you have it's to buy a thousand? It's cups on demand. And, ah, okay. Yep. So, so there's not a warehouse of those mugs. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, two is in your here. garage somewhere. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. yeah, because some people are like that. You know, it's like, oh, oh yeah, oh, you need to buy a hundred T-shirts. Yep, to get yeah. a deal, right? Yeah. yeah, I never liked that. It doesn't make I any don't sense. Like that deal you know? either. Yeah, yeah. So I, I really like the, the drop shipping on demand mm -hmm. aspect of it. Mm -hmm. You know, you set the price, they'll print it up and they'll send it and handle all the customer service and everything. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the easy way to go about. It. But there's also um, websites like Teespring mm -hmm. that allow you to do something similar. Um, for like t-shirts or For, yeah, other materials, other, other materials, merch. yeah, yep. yeah, pillows, hats, all that stuff. Yeah. Cool, yeah, that's great. Um, so that's the second way, physical products. Mm -hmm. um, the third way to make money from your podcast, monetize your podcast in 2020, is affiliate products, and I'll let you talk about this. So one of the biggest affiliates is Amazon. So you can go to affiliate.amazon.com, I believe, mm -hmm. and you can. S Affiliates sell anything that they sell and get a percentage of those sales. Uh, if somebody goes to your website and you disclose that it's an affiliate sale, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a whole bunch of rules around it. But basically anything that Amazon sells or just about everything. So a book, you might get X percent from that. Uh, uh, a video game, a movie, pretty much anything they sell, you can get a small percentage of anything they sell especially if you mention it in, in, in a podcast mm -hmm. and then you put it in your show notes, you put a link in your show notes and you disclose the fact that it's an affiliate link and you're making a little bit of money, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, commission, et cetera. Um, but it's basically a way to make a commission on someone else's product, right? Uh, which is great. Um, and Amazon is one of the big ones. It's not the only one. Like uh, I think most online companies nowadays have some kind of, if they're big enough, have some kind of affiliate product. Mm -hmm to basically promote the product because, because there's something in it for the person who's promoting the product, right? Otherwise, it's like, well, I really like it. Like, Temi isn't paying us or Rev is not paying us mm -hmm. to mention it. That's not an affiliate, mm -hmm. technically. Uh, but if there was a service similar to it that paid us to mention it, then we would get a small cut right. every time they clicked on, you know, blah, 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 dot com, creative truth. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and the, the, disclo the disclosure you mentioned mm -hmm. is a big, is very important. Yes. You have to disclose. Otherwise, yes. you get in pretty big trouble if you don't disclose it. It's yeah. And they don't pay you. Yeah. You get in trouble and they don't pay you. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and Amazon's really on top of that. Um, and then what else? Um, so, yeah, there's other, um, like, for example, Fiverr has one. Mm -hmm. uh, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. And then mm -hmm. they'll give you a special extra slash whatever code so you can mention them mm. and then every time somebody uh uses uses your link for it or uber mm -hmm. uber has one a bunch of other companies have them yeah. um pretty much if they have a physical product or a digital SaaS product uh, that they're trying to sell to you um or service um a lot of the the more newer companies have some kind of affiliate deal yeah, yeah as a promotional thing yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's, it's again it's like uh it's a low effort mm -hmm. and low return uh, or high effort, high return. You'd be surprised dollar. actually because sometimes it's a percentage or sometimes it's dollar amounts ah, okay. per per lead. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, not per lead, but per per buyer. Mm -hmm. So um, some of them, they'll pay you between 5 and $50 for uh, someone who purchases said product. Oh, wow. 
Yeah. So if it's a really expensive product, like uh, several hundred dollars or several mm -hmm. thousand bucks. Like a go, mattress, like a Casper mattress. Yeah, yeah, like. exactly. I'm not sure what the Magic Affiliate deal. And you can literally type in a company and then affiliate, and then it'll Google will show you whatever oh, okay. links to get to said thing. And if you have the traffic, A, mm -hmm. right, kind of important. We'll talk about that in a future episode, right? Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, minor detail. Uh, so you have to have the traffic. You have to have the episode saying, hey, buy the blah, blah product or blah, blah service. And then you need an affiliate link mm -hmm. so you can make the, the, the ching ching. Yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> you're, you're just mentioning it because, it's like, oh, it's great. That's right. <laughs> yeah, buy one today. <laughs> Except I forgot to make money. <laughs> that's true. Right. That's true. Yeah, well, that's a good point. If, because, you know, I'm thinking affiliate link, like I'm going to get 2% of a sale at Amazon. Potentially. But, but if it's Casper and it's a mattress, or, yes. or if they go to Amazon and buy a camera or a mattress mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. something really, you know, a TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, a big purchase, like a 2% a of a thousand bucks. Yeah. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Right. For one purchase. Yeah. Like a fridge or a TV to your point could mm -hmm. be a thousand bucks. Mm -hmm. Right. You get 20 bucks. Yeah. Not the end of the world. If a lot of listeners <laughs> <laughs> buy. <laughs> And realistically speaking, not everyone's going to buy, really. Right. It's, it's usually a very small percentage that's actually going to go, ooh, I really like that. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there's very good examples like Tim Ferriss, for example. Mm -hmm. He does affiliates all the time. And he usually puts them in the very front of his uh, yeah. episodes. Yeah. And you'll hear them. Like there'll be like two or three of them. Mm -hmm. And he'll get, because he, he, wow, he gets a stupid amount of views, right. a lot of views. Right. And, and he'll, he'll, um, He'll prearrange it with the the company, mm. so they'll he'll do a special deal to make sure that the not only he gets a deal but the audience gets a better deal, mm. uh, so that there's something in it for them. So you know he'll have the blah 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 dot com slash Tim mm -hmm. right or or uh, EO Fire. He'll mm -hmm. have EO Fire slash whatever yeah. or, or that EO Fire will be it'll be blah 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 dot com slash EO Fire, um, and he'll. Uh, uh, John Lee Dumas will, will get his his affiliate deal, mm -hmm. um, but because they have a stupidly large audience, um, they'll get more money out of it yeah. too. Yeah. So so they might make ten, twenty, seventy k yeah. per episode. We should definitely make that one of our next upcoming uh, meetups. Goals. Goals. <laughs> 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 but yeah, uh, what uh, how to just build how to grow your podcast? Oh right? yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah how yeah, to get yeah. more traffic. Yes. Um, so the fourth thing. So we did digital products, physical products, affiliate links, and affiliate products. And number four is coaching. Mm -hmm. So offering coaching. So you do a lot of coaching. I do consulting. Actually. Consulting. Okay. What's yeah. the difference? Uh, coaching is more one-on-one. -on -one. So, okay. so like when you're when you're coaching, for example, an athlete, that's a common, given, understand, understood thing. You're either coaching a team or you're coaching a, a, one athlete, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like a, a tennis player or a, a golf. Mm -hmm. Or uh, you're you're helping them seeing what they don't see because they don't see they're blind to their own yeah. moves etc and yeah. they might be moving the wrong way or whatever or they might be missing something um so coaching is typically one-on-one -on -one. sometimes instead of an athlete it's an executive right or someone trying to better themselves like a life coach or a business coach or uh, an uh, um, athletic coach for the sake mm -hmm. of argument um i what i do is consulting which is number five um <laughs> that you want to do you do coaching no. Okay. Not yet. Yeah. So I, I don't really, I know some coaches are certified in some way, like mm -hmm. life coaches, I think. Um, consultants are not really certified in any way, shape or form. They're just subject matter experts and they've done okay. piles of stuff, what they're coaching typically, sorry, what they're consulting about. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea is to, to bring them value to typically to a business where they're improving, like you're consulting around podcasts. Right. So do I, right? Right. Uh, I, I consult around uh, managing media for mm -hmm. large organizations. Like how do you find it again? Kind of important for mm -hmm. somebody. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then I coach about uh, how to write books as well. So okay. podcasting, media, and books. That's, okay. That's what I do. Okay. You want and, it, and once you're, so if you have a podcast yeah. and you have a coaching or consulting business, mm -hmm. it's a great way to market the coaching and consulting business, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, because then you, you, you can mention it towards your like your call to action mm -hmm. especially if you're doing something like this right mm -hmm. you can mention hey uh if you're interested in pot in the box right mm -hmm. uh or if you're interested in doing this or that or the other thing contact this person right mm -hmm. and and then they can you can reach out to raz and he'll help you with podcasts yeah. in in said area do, do you do it nationally or just locally uh right now reasonably 
Regionally, okay, yeah. okay, perfect. Yeah. So, so, so people in the Savannah region, Low Country region, uh, Georgia, uh, Georgia, Low Country mm-hmm. in Georgia. Yeah, I have a yep. couple clients in Atlanta. Perfect. Yeah, and yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, so they can reach out to you and ping you for coaching around how to better or create their podcast. Mm-hmm. Fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I should start promoting that more. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I promote all things. I know, right? <laughs> There'll be a call to action later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See the show notes. <laughs> yeah. This was a live. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would create one before I put it out. <laughs> uh, but that, yeah, but so that's another way if you're a coach or if you want to start coaching uh-huh. is to, you know, yeah, create a... This is a perfect um, vehicle for it. Perfect vehicle. You know, yeah. people are listening. They want the subject matter you're offering. Mm-hmm. And some people want more. Some people mm-hmm. want you. Yes. So it's a great way to create a landing page on your website. Mm-hmm. Or even something simple. It doesn't have to be anything mm-hmm. crazy no, with a no. link to contact. You. Yeah, exactly. Because they're just looking for value, right? So you're going to... You're, they're going to pay you per, per per hour per day or mm-hmm. per per result, right? Per episode sometimes, and then and then they're going to get value out of it, and they either do less work or they do work smarter, right? Mm-hmm. That's the goal, right? Mm-hmm. But they, either way, they're going to get value, probably more than what they would be spending if they didn't know what you right. teach them. Exactly. Fair? Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that is number five. Yep. Four and five. Yep. So number six would be sell your own books. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so we talked about eBooks, mm-hmm. but this is like physical copies. You can. I mean, books, books, print books actually are on the decline. Interestingly mm. enough, uh, it's about forty percent of the market now, mm. and about um, and actually more like thirty-five percent of the market, and about sixty percent of the market is eBooks mm. uh, because people like to carry their entire library with them on their phone, tablet, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, and then the fastest growing one is audiobooks, yep. which is the long form of this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Very long form, multiple hours. <laughs> so, but uh, some people don't have the patience for that. Hence mm-hmm. why podcasting exists, mm-hmm. right? Where you can chop it up into little pot, uh, into episodes, mm-hmm. right? A chapter here or part of a chapter, uh, or, or an interview with the author. Yeah. Right. right. Um, so I sell my own books, uh, on, on my own, um, uh, podcasts and, and typically uh, I'll create a book. Um, what I'll typically do is, is what I'll do is I'll create a, a podcast series, like an entire year's worth of podcast episodes, like mm-hmm. 53, four episodes mm-hmm. uh, of different interviews, different people from potentially all over the world about a topic. Mm-hmm. And then I'll transcribe it. The, mm-hmm. uh, the interview. Mm-hmm. And then I'll take the segments because I asked boiler plated questions like four or five questions that are the same question to every single person Mm -hmm. they answer them completely different you don't get the same answers surprisingly (laughs) (laughs) hence why this model works (laughs) right and then you could a book out of it Mm -hmm. with a bunch of editing and copy editing and stuff like that yeah create a cover thank you fiverr and uh, (laughs) thank you thank you temi and rev for for transcription (laughs) so for a few hundred bucks basically you can create a book and then you you what i do is I'll, i'll i'll release the podcast with the book already created. Wow. So it'll be advertising the book in every single episode mm. and saying, if you want a transcription of it or you want to find out who the next persons are mm-hmm. that I'm interviewing about this topic, because you may be interested in this topic that no one else is talking about here. And I typically pick a niche topic that mm-hmm. not everyone's talking about. That's kind of important. Mm-hmm. So that's how I sell books. Mm. That's Using awesome. podcasts. Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks. So, do you uh, do you sell it through Amazon and Audible too? Okay. Is uh, that the main Audible, way? no, I don't do the audio v- book version. Okay. Only because the, the podcast. podcast is the audio version, gotcha. um, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So, I could, but that would be more editing technically yeah. if you yeah. think about it, because I would have to repackage all the audio. Mm-hmm. And there's an intro and outro on each one, and I could just yeah, on the outros and mm-hmm. intros. So, it I could use it into Audible fashion. Um, but typically audible is much higher quality. Yeah. It's like studio quality, like, yeah. like this or better. Right. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> excuse me, this is really, I mean, it'll be great once I edit it, but with the cars going by, it's not right. Oh no, no. Yeah. Yeah. You want to be in like your closet with clothes yeah. all over you right. <laughs> right. <laughs> on, on a bad Swe- day. <laughs> Sweating with the- <laughs> <laughs> Right. Right. Okay. Fan time. I've done one chapter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So you can sell your own books. I haven't written a book, so uh, Henrik is the expert on that. Mm-hmm. So you're lucky to have him here talking about it. Thanks. Uh, but uh, yeah. So that's another great way. Mm-hmm. Um, next is number seven, which is public speaking. And you do a lot of public speaking. I right? do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I'm doing some tomorrow. 
actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Where, where, where will you be? Uh, I'll be at a university speaking about self-publishing. <laughs> okay, cool. So this is practice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 so not, not specifically about podcasting, but about self-publishing because typically all my books are self-published. Mm -hmm. Like I've been approached by publishers, mm -hmm. but unless you like rejection, most people don't. <laughs> um, I was approached by a publisher and, and it's, they asked me to write a book mm -hmm. and they're like, and I was like, sure, right. About a topic that I already knew. Mm -hmm. And I was like, sure, send me a contract. And they're like, oh, we'll pay you just for print. Okay. But the topic's about digital. Yeah, Exactly. That makes no sense whatsoever. Right. I was like, but 60% of the market is digital. <laughs> so you're not going to pay me for digital copies, meaning ebooks. Right. And you're going to print almost no print books. And you want to pay me for. So yeah, there's no yeah. real like value mm -hmm. using a publisher. People like that's the old model of thinking of things. There's, I think, over a million books published, self published every mm -hmm. year now. Oh, wow. Um, which. It, you know, adds more noise than signal, honestly, because anybody can publish anything they want pretty much mm -hmm. on Amazon and on Ingram Spark and on everything else yeah. from here to China and back, right? Um, and everywhere in between. But the, the challenge is, so back to public speaking, more importantly, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you, um, if you write a book, you will more likely get speaking engagements, right? Right, because they want to have a book to give to the audience, especially mm -hmm. if it's a conference, mm -hmm. right? So, and then you can charge hundreds of thousands of dollars per talk, mm -hmm. um, or give, or you can, what you can do is is give a hundred talks for free, and then that's practice basically, and then it makes your name very well known, mm -hmm. um, so that you can join a speaker's bureau. Uh, speaking bureau and get more speaking engagements. Okay. And then so uh, they'll sometimes either pay you a net f a, a flat fee, uh, hundreds to thousands of dollars, or even tens of thousands, depending if it's a keynote, etc. Um, and then or they'll buy your books, mm. and uh, you know ten thousand, five thousand, whatever number of books, and then give them away to to said audience okay. members because they're already paying thousands of dollars to show right. up. Right. Um, so there's multiple ways to to do that, but mm. uh, um, but public speaking. So I, I I have interviewed public speakers as well. So they're really good interviewees. Mm, that's true. <laughs> that's true. And they know like how to speak with yeah. a nice cadence and voice. Mm -hmm. and, and you know that they're speaking far slower than I do typically because <laughs> I'm from the North. <laughs> no, I'm not from Savannah, <laughs> not from the low country. I just live here. <laughs> that's why I speak way too fast, but they, they'll speak nicely and you'll understand everything they're saying and all that. And, but more importantly, it, as a public speaker yourself, you, you can either tote yourself as a public speaker and you can present yourself as a public speaker and you can get more business as a public speaker mm -hmm. because you're advertising yourself as one. Mm -hmm. And they can see examples, mm -hmm. right? I was like, mm, yeah, oh, he knows about blah, blah topic. Well, we're mm -hmm. having a conference or talk about blah, blah, blah topic. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be asked. Uh, I also typically do one or two a month mm -hmm. above public, public speaking. Okay. Yeah. Um, some in New York, some here, some wherever. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. I've mm -hmm. actually been asked this year. I have about four gigs. Nice. Yeah. So not getting paid. This will be a part of my hundred. It's okay. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But make sure but you record them. I will. Yeah. Sure. At the very minimum audio. Mm -hmm. Right. Because that, that can be a future episode. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Even if you, you do a segment of it, like kind of like Gary Vee does. Mm -hmm. Right. Where he has Mr. Chase, camera chaser. Mm -hmm. Right. Camera guy. Right. Or person. And, and he'll audio record it and then you'll chop it up into little bits so you can use it on Instagram right. and YouTube and LinkedIn That's and what blah, I'm blah, doing. blah. More than anything, I want to send them to uh, my email list. Try yeah. to build a growing email list. Mm -hmm. So I'm, uh, I want to send it to them. Yeah, yeah. because uh, often the conference will give you a special code mm -hmm. to promote the, the, the conference because they want your audience to come to that conference right. so they can get more ticket sales. Right. Right. So they may give you a special deal. So it's like, oh, well, if you bring a thousand of your own, t your own fans, mm -hmm. You know, raving fans. That's good for them. Good for you, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, very true. Mm -hmm. Very true. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I was. I didn't know the details about speaking, or even think about that they'll buy your book. So mm -hmm. oh, that's yeah. another great reason for mm -hmm. me to write a book. Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to write a book on. I don't know if I should even say it, okay. but nobody's gonna watch this anyway. So, mm -hmm. uh, somebody watch it. But I want to write a book on like the future of podcasting, like where I think it's gonna go. That's fair. You know, that's that's a good idea. Don't so many people write about that. This is true. Yeah. I mean, people have written a little bit about it, but usually it's a how-to, right? Yeah. Like a. Um, Shell Holtz and, and uh, uh, you know who I'm talking about. 
uh, or uh, EO Fire guy, yeah. uh, Johnny Dumas, or right. a few others. Uh, yeah, I'm, there's a ton of podcasts yeah. and books, yeah, yeah, yeah. but not many about the future. Of it. This is true, yeah. You know? and, and it's evolving, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, like you have different channels, it's getting easier, mm-hmm. it's getting uh, uh, more automated in mm-hmm. some ways. Or, or, or and, and some people are complaining about the automation because there's, you know, the automation is like eh, constrained, right. right? You know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you don't, we'll have a future episode about that. <laughs> but actually, we will, right? Yep. <laughs> That's, yep. on, that's on our list of things to do, <laughs> which which you can take the survey, right? Yeah. Yeah, if you're a member of the, uh, what's the meetup the called S- again? The Savannah Podcasting Meetup. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right. You can take it. We have a poll up right now, and you can tell us, like, what uh, topics you want us to cover in future meetups. Mm-hmm. And we appreciate any feedback just so that everybody's happy in the group and everybody's learning and we're all growing together. Mm-hmm. That's a goal. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so next, uh, last two. Uh Hosting live events. <clears throat> so this could either be something like what we're doing now. Mm-hmm. There's a meetup, technically. Mm-hmm. If we had a huge, if we had a larger audience, then we could charge for a meetup. Sure. You know, charge for people to join yeah. us. Or yeah. if we did it at a restaurant or some uh, fancy smancy recording studio, yeah. you know, we could yeah. charge for the, the space. Yeah. Um, but I think what this is more talking about, like, if you have a large enough audience, you can sell tickets to a live podcast recording. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I've seen that done several times. Mm-hmm. Um, the... Uh, is it Michael Bloomberg? Uh, Blumberg. Okay. Uh, not the, pre- not, not the presidential <laughs> candidate. Yeah. Is it Michael? The guy who did Gimlet Media. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think it is Michael. Yeah, but yeah. It's, it's not spelled Bloomberg like yeah. the presidential candidate. It's, right. it's Blumberg, I think, is it's, it's <laughs> the spelling. I right. think it's Michael. I, I may be mistaken on the last first name. Uh, it's Blumberg. Uh Alex, excuse me. Alex Sorry, Blumberg. I apologize. Alex, yes. it's yes. Alex Blumberg, uh, yes. B L U M B E R G. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so he started, uh, amongst others, uh, Gimlet Media, uh, which did start up and piles of uh, uh, amazing podcasts, which we're all familiar with. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they got bought up by Spotify. Yep. Yeah, which cool. made them a lot of money. Um, all good things, mm-hmm. but um, but yeah, did, they did live ones. They did live recordings. Yes, yeah. So I got to see. I went to uh, Kickstarter, mm-hmm. the headquarters in Brooklyn, and they were doing a live talk that they were recording. That I went to. I think I paid a small fee to mm-hmm. to go in. Uh, they had a nice auditorium. Auditorium was packed, full of people who who were very big fans of Alex and and a bunch of other podcasters. Uh, and they were talking about uh, podcasting and how, how people use Kickstarter and a bunch of other things, which we'll be talking about in a minute. And, um, yeah, it was really good. And then, yeah, you, you can you can rent space, interestingly enough, in, in like, venues like universities. Mm-hmm. I, I found that out recently. When universities aren't having classes, like in the evening, mm-hmm. typically, you know, they have big atrium classes right. that, that fit three plus 100 people or 500 or 1,000 uh, or, or, or conference spaces, essentially. And you can rent those spaces out for a reasonable amount of money, mm-hmm. not, not stupid amounts of money, a reasonable amount of money. And then what you do is you charge a little bit for tickets, like, say, $25. And as long as you fill in, like, a quarter of the room, yeah. you make up the cost mm-hmm. easily. So that's a one way to do it. And then what you do is you record it. So, so, but you don't re- release the episode immediately because then the people who paid for it, be like, eh, what did I pay for? Right. Right. You release it a few months later. Right. Um, and then people feel that they got the value out of it. They got to ask questions, potentially speaking mm-hmm. to, to the audience members or the, the panelists. Yeah. Uh, that's really cool. Nice. Yeah. 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 One of my clients is a huge, uh, YouTube so he has like over 100,000 followers nice. on YouTube now. Very cool. And he is, uh, you know, millions of downloads on Great. iTunes. Super. And he's a stand-up comedian, so he's using his podcast to get more people to his shows. Smart. But I'm thinking that we should record a live show of the podcast. Yeah. I think people would love that. Oh, totally. You know? Yeah. yeah. And he's a comedian, so he's always about feedback. And uh-huh. he'll, he would love it if people start laughing. Like, he just gets a big oh, laugh. Oh, yeah. Oh. You know? Oh, and, and then we would be rolling on the floor. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then and then our traffic would go would skyrocket. <laughs> that's, right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So, maybe that's an idea. Maybe we could rent instead of trying to rent a comedy yeah. venue and fly a bunch of people out there. Maybe we could just rent a university. Yeah, yeah. Venue or something. Yeah. And, and, uh, also, restaurants typically mm-hmm. they'll have a, uh, a space as long as they're quiet enough, or mm-hmm. they have a space that as long as you you know it's it's BYO 
no, sorry, not bring your own anything. Right. Buy, 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 their, buy their, you know, drinks, food, whatever. They'll have spaces. A lot of the restaurants will have spaces where uh, they, they don't have high traffic days, like mm -hmm. not the weekend for obvious reasons, right? Like a, a, a Thursday or Wednesday or whatever that looks like. A slow day and they'll tell you, oh, yeah, yeah, you can come in and use this space. We'll have a little dedicated area in the back or whatever. And you can use that and you can have a little, you can bring your own speaking equipment or whatever mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and have, a, you know, 50 people, 100 people-ish, yeah. depending on what, what the fire code allows you. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea too. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. And last but not least, uh, another great way, um, especially if you have a large audience or a very dedicated audience or a very supportive audience, um, Patreon mm -hmm. and sites like Patreon mm -hmm. where people can pay money on a regular basis to support you mm -hmm. and they get the swag. And so the same client I was talking about, he has tons of Patreon subscribers who just love them and they just want to support the cause. Mm -hmm. nine, nine times out of 10, uh, they're not even watching the extra content he puts up. Mm. They just want to support him. That's great. You know? Yeah. So uh, if you have a podcast like that, then it's, Patreon is worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it, I think it's a great way to build your audience too mm -hmm. because if you're putting out different diff, different products, not just podcasts, not mm -hmm. just books, not just whatever, because there's a bunch of artists that do this, right? Yes. Where they have a podcast, they have a book, they have a – they create – interesting content or mm -hmm. interesting things that people want mm -hmm. and then they'll continue to pay them and support them on a monthly basis i think right yep. they'll pay x dollars yep and it, it can be as low or as, as much as you want yep and, uh, it's, and it's different different levels most right most patreon uh, subscription most patreon creators mm -hmm. have different levels so some are do like a dollar it's just like mm -hmm. thank you for supporting me right i appreciate the 12 dollars a year i really do sure and then some go up to 100 bucks right you know and then with the 100 bucks you get you know, extra content. You probably see them live somewhere. Mm -hmm. You get a T-shirt. You get a hat. You get a notebook, a pillow. Yeah. You know, right. Right. You can't just wrap maybe up a, maybe them. a call with them. Yeah, a call. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of the cool thing about Patreon is it mm -hmm. gives you access to the people that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, do you have any others uh, that you thought of? Um, no. Okay, I, I thought of a couple, um, and it kind of is similar to eight. So instead of just hosting live events, like live in person, mm -hmm. you can do webinars. Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, webinars are easy, like really easy. Mm -hmm. so, so basically, you, what, what I recommend is you, you pre-announce your paragraph worth of information about what the, 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 pot, the uh, webinar is going to be about a month in advance on said channel. Like, so if it's a personal friends, family kind of thing, you do it on Facebook. If it's a business East kind of thing, you do it on LinkedIn mm -hmm. and you announce it a, a week, uh, sorry, a month in advance. And you, you keep announcing it on, you know, a, a month, two weeks, a week, a few days, the same day uh, with the same thing, to mm -hmm. making sure that you get a, enough people to sign up. Um, and you'll have maybe a few hundred people uh, sign up mm -hmm. and, and, and you'll have potentially a large percentage of that join because mm -hmm. just because they sign up doesn't mean they'll show up right but more importantly you can record it you can post the video from the webinar on youtube linkedin etc mm -hmm. and then you can also strip because if you use zoom yep which is super popular very very easy tool to use it'll give you an audio file too yep. which is audio super quality as long as you use decent mics right mm -hmm. and you can have your podcast ready to be edited uh out of that out of your however long your, your your webinar is, typically they're half hour to an hour. Mm -hmm. The good ones, uh, if they're extendedly long, people are like fade off pretty yeah. quickly. Um, and as long as they're not too salesy and they kind of get to the point reasonably quickly, mm -hmm. right after the intros and all that fun stuff. And mm -hmm. you can have a pile of people talking too. That's right. Right, uh, panelists from from all over the world typically, mm -hmm. as long as they have decent internet connection. And then there's a secret way to do it. Um, I think it's called uh, ON two twenty four. Okay. Where you pre record all of the interviews. So it doesn't matter how bad their internet connection is. <laughs> <laughs> they can be, they can have horrific uh, bandwidth. But what they do is they pre record the perfect interview, right? Mm -hmm. right where they, they sound and look amazing and all this. And they, and they take 50 takes if necessary. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the last take, right, or whatever is necessary that's edited is what people see. Okay. They see it, they hear it. They ask pre-prescribed questions, and then they go back and forth. And it's you can create an entire conference around it, oh, which wow. is pretty cool. So it's like a series of webinars pre-recorded. And the only thing that the people that are, were on the show uh, that were uh, 
they're in the background just listening to comments mm. and they can just basically just answer comments while they are getting streamed in. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so their audience is now focused on the audience, mm -hmm. right? Instead of just like, oh, I have to concentrate on mm. what my words and what my points, uh, I'm going to talk about point 16 now. And right. blah, 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 blah. So instead they can focus on audience questions right. and adding more audience value, yeah. which is pretty Which cool. is nice because when, when I'm watching webinars, I hate it when they just like jump back and forth from content to answer questions, mm -hmm. from content to answer questions. Yeah. I understand you have to do that to keep people engaged. Yes. But it, it breaks up the your like it breaks up the train of thought and true kind of derails it a little bit. It does, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. I, I think adding so you you prefer questions at the end. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think I think it's, it's probably smarter that way too because then then they stick around for mm -hmm. if they want to ask a question. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, you know, you give your value 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 statements in theory, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, you you promote whatever call to action you want. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, what, buy my book, of course, uh, follow us, whatever, uh, uh, follow, uh, subscribe, etc., and then and then ask the questions around what you just mentioned or what you just sold or tried to sell them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, so it's all good ways to do it. So webinars is is uh, pretty easy and pretty. It can be monetized very very quickly because mm. you can have a set audience. And again, you may have a long tail. Are you familiar with the concept of long tails? Yes. Yeah. As far as keyword research and stuff. Right. Yeah. So, so you may have, let's say, 300 people sign up and 100 people show up mm -hmm. for the live webinar the, during the hour of you know noon, noon on a Wednesday or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, but then when you post the video on YouTube and LinkedIn and wherever else it goes, Facebook video, etc. After just the recording it's itself, you may get thousands of people listening afterwards. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the long tail is. Uh, if you look at the chart, it would look like this. So you have a uh, hundred people listening, and then over time you have the thousand. Mm. Over if time is is this scale here, right. and the number of listeners at one point in time, it'll be really high for that one hour, roughly, and then it'll taper off, but keep uh -huh. going for years. Yeah, yeah, as long as it's relevant content. Mm. Yeah, so which is pretty cool. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, and then and then as long as your deals or what you're pushing is basically still offered. You can still continue making money on it, mm. which is how a lot of podcasters are still making money on their podcasts because yeah. it's relatively timeless, right? Because mm -hmm. their deal will be live for a very minimum a year plus, right? right? Uh, if it's not, there's a big issue with that, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> um, and then uh, what else? So we talked about 10 things. And then I'm blanking. There was one other thing I wanted to mention. Uh, there's ebooks, merch. Was it Kickstarter? Yes, which is similar to Patreon, except um, I actually did a Kickstarter successfully. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, and it's not that hard, interestingly enough. It, it, it's, well, let me just reframe that. It's a full-time job, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it only lasts three months <laughs> or whenever you can deliver your product uh, that, or, that you mentioned. Um, so what I did is, is I did a Kickstarter after I did a podcast. So I, I, I recorded my first podcast. I did 100 episodes. And I asked my audience, would you like me to transcribe these? Mm. So this is the first time I was going to ever transcribe anything. But I wanted the audience and the world to judge whether the content should be mm. and put skin in the game and say, yes, I will pay for that mm. because I want one. I want this. Mm -hmm. I want it to be transcribed. And for that, I built my first book out of it. Mm. So I said, I'll give you a 500-page book, hardcover, full color, all color inside too, with graph with, with illustrations mm -hmm. for the low low fee of three hundred dollars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or then ebook for twenty bucks. Yeah. And then a couple deals in between. There was several takers for the five for the three hundred. Oh nice. There was no takers for the two hundred. Mm. There was several takers for the hundred. And there was a whole pile of takers for the 20 bucks. Big mm -hmm. surprise, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a couple, you know, stragglers that wanted to pay just because they th thought it was cool. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so I, I, it paid for itself. So I, it paid for the entire design of the book, the creation of the book, and the transcription of the book for a full color printed book and the ebook, which is two actually uh, formats mm -hmm. and two, two different kinds of editing, if you will. And I was able to pay for it through Kickstarter, nice. uh, and basically the the it was very binary. It's it's either you either pay for it and 
Kickstarter is either you get paid 100% or more, or you don't get any money. Mm. There's no like halfway kind of sort of uh, uh, Indiegogo gives you like whatever, whatever you, you get yeah, with a small cut. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Kickstarter gives you almost 100% of what you, you earned, I think minus 10% uh, for their cut and, and their payment system. Mm -hmm. No, they might have changed since, since I've used them. But um, once you do that, um, I got 103% funding and it paid for everything I was doing for it. And I was able to uh, transcribe my first uh, 100 interviews in a book uh, and then continue to, to transcribe other episodes because, because the, the ask from the audience was clear mm -hmm. that people wanted this. And th there was a, a hidden bonus to it. Because I pre-sold all those books, right? Because mm -hmm. they paid for it in advance. Uh, that's how it works. Uh, and I got the 100% funding. So I, I got the money. Otherwise, if, if I got 99% funding, mm -hmm. uh, they would all get their money back. Mm -hmm. Which is fair, if you think about it. So it's a, a safe-ish investment. Um, the, aside from knowing that the audience wanted uh, transcriptions going forward, the other bonus was I was able to track because it was an ebook for the most part. Um, how many people read it? Oh, nice. I sold a low, low 64 ebooks. Mm -hmm. 2,000 people read it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> because, because I took off the DRM on purpose because mm -hmm. I wanted people to share it. I asked people to share it because that's, it's a valuable thing, yeah. right? right? Yeah. I want people to share the message. Not, I, I, don't, I didn't really care about the book sales, right? right? I wanted to share the message. Yeah. And that was a huge propellant for oh, my podcast yeah. because people were like, oh, and I put links in the, the, the in the ebook to, so that they, if they got the PDF version, they could click on it. I gave multiple versions of it. Yeah. They could click on it and go to the podcast. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then they could see the transcription. Brilliant. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. I, I thought it was a pretty smart idea at the time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it, it worked very well, but better than I was hoping. Um, it, I didn't make a stupid amount of money on it, but um, yeah. that wasn't the goal. The goal right. was to build the audience. Yeah. Um, so, so how big was your audience when you started? Like, great question. Um, right around, you know, uh, I, I don't have those numbers, but it, it, it was, if, it's, you, if you could estimate it probably tripled, I would say okay. from just that effort. Okay. Because it, it promoted it and it promoted it amongst the fans mm -hmm. that, that because, um, in Kickstarter with what takes so much effort aside from the pre-planning and the actual funding period, which is typically a month, every single time somebody funded me, even a dollar, I would thank them. Mm. And I would ask them to share it, to share the success. And as soon as I got like 1% more funding, you know, whether it was from a human or I just saw the fund, I saw it dip up, I would email the entire people, all the people that would, uh, and I would give them the progress report on a regular basis, mm. on a sometimes daily or weekly basis. Uh, and I would advertise it on all the social media platforms of the time. There, there were less at the time. This was several years ago. And uh, different platforms. And um, promote it on a regular basis. But because of that, um, it promoted the brand mm -hmm. of Another Damn Podcast, Another Damn Blog, Another Damn Consultancy. And that's how I launched my consultancy, too. Mm. So that was a big monetization move, too. Because that was a propellant and purposely done this way. So I could launch my business with something that was tangible yeah. that people could see that and and even the 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 people i was working with at the time they're like oh i want a copy mm -hmm. they're like okay you can buy one <laughs> 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 or i can send you one <laughs> yeah send it to your friends <laughs> right anyways okay cool yeah, yeah. well that's awesome wasn't that i think that's great information for everybody thanks yeah yeah, yeah i think that was a great great idea and i think i mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. i think i'll introduce so i have one client who's a law podcast they're law mm -hmm. attorneys they have we, I just I just said it a minute ago. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, sure, sure. Yeah. we want to create an ebook. Mm -hmm. That might be a great way to do it. Just Kickstarter it. Yeah, yeah. Because that, then you'll know if people want that ebook yeah. uh, of law and whatever the topics yeah. are. Yeah, and uh, what people I did will. is I, yeah, I'm sure they will. Yeah, because uh, lawyers or expiring lawyers in law school, mm -hmm. law schools may want it, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and that gives them the platform to potentially, oh, I want to be on the podcast too. Yeah. Right, so you get more guests, you get more traffic, you get to propel your message further and, and potentially whatever you're, you happen to be selling, whether it's law services or podcast services mm -hmm. or whatever you happen to be pushing, right, amongst the things that we talked about, you can propel that message further 
with all those things. Yeah. Yeah. It's all good. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you, Hen- Henrik, for being here. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Russ. Uh, and coming and supporting the Savannah Podcast Meetup. That's going to end this month's meetup. Uh, but I want to invite everybody out there again to join, whether you're in the Savannah area or not. We put all these on YouTube and I'll share them to Facebook and send them out to the group and post them on our page so everybody can watch. Um, I think the last one we recorded, um, I got a lot of great feedback from it. Uh, so we'll do the same thing with this one. And it's streaming right now, so I don't have a an excuse to not put it up. It's already up there. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. And I'm Raz with pop, my company's podcast on the go, and I'm the co-founder of the Savannah Podcast Meetup. I'm Henrik DeGear, and you can also go to H-E-N-R-I-K-D-E-G-Y-O-R.com. See all of my speaking, books, podcasts, and other things that I do. Thank you so much. Cool. Thank you, guys.